Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm Taicho, and that's X, and we're on a quest to conquer the internet. So continuing in our series of building a One Piece database part two, we're just gonna jump right into it. Uh, we're gonna continue working off of the script that we developed in the part one video. Um, before I do so, I'll do a quick recap on how we started and where we are, and then I'll spend some time uh, adding to that script and seeing how much progress we can make. Uh, okay, so my style, I just like to jump right into it and that's exactly what we're going to do. So here we go. So in the previous video, um, we started out by importing a bunch of different packages, mainly different URL lib packages. Those packages are going to allow us to send requests to different HTML websites. Um, essentially looking to access the HTML script that drives the website. We have beautiful soup, which will enable us to parse the data and turn it into a more usable, readable format for us. And then we also have some other um, packages that we got, like regular expressions to help with cleaning, pandas we'll use for data frames, and then some other um, ancillary packages that'll help us get the job done. From there, after we imported our packages, we defined a quick function called clean input, which takes a variable, essentially cleans out a lot of different characters and symbols that we can encounter in the HTML script. It's never going to come out initially very pretty, so we have to uh, handle that data appropriately. And for those of you familiar with the data world, that's a common task, uh, just cleaning the data. Afterwards, we created two variables, um, main URL and story arcs HTML. These are the main links that we'll use and manipulate in order to send requests to the different websites, and as well as create um, other variables off of that, which will enable us to kind of extend our reach of the websites that we work with. From there, we encountered one of our first data objects or data types and that is list. We created two empty lists, one called saga link list and the other called arc link list. These will hold our initial links that we create from our initial scrape in the next part. After that we defined a variable called soup. This is essentially our first uh, parsing of the story arcs HTML. So we opened up this HTML and called it story arcs. And then from there, we're, we're just putting that in a variable called soup. <clears throat> Afterwards, we did a for loop um, where we used this find all function and we were looking for specific tags. So tags that the a tag in the HTML script. And then we also used this regular expression function compile um, which if finding that certain a tag we look for uh, the href attributes and then within the href attributes we're kind of searching for the specific text and we're doing so so that we can get access to all the different um, links for the different story arcs that are on the website And then afterwards, so when we set that for loop, we wanted to execute two different conditions. And we do that using an if else statement. Um, we're looking for, again, this href attribute. Um, and then if we find the href attribute in the website, as seen previously in the video before, um, when we were inspecting the HTML contents, uh, we want to look for two specific words, saga and arc. 
So if we find those two words in the href attribute, um, we want to create a variable called URL and what we'll do is concatenate this main URL variable that we created up top as well as the href information um, and this is what will give us the URL to that specific website uh, and then also we want to um, I'm sorry so yeah that'll give us the h the, the URL to that specific website and then working on the list that we created we want to append that URL but we also want to append the title um, so that'll give us two variables it'll give us a link and it'll essentially give us the title of the saga so using that concept we also want to apply that to whether or not we see the word arc essentially executing the same conditions by creating a URL and then getting the title for that URL so I'll print the output for both of these just so we can see what that looks like uh, and it's pretty busy but essentially we have what we have created now is two lists that each contain lists so while that's not super straightforward what we have is a list denoted by this one opening bracket but then we see the bracket again which means that we have another list followed by a comma and then we have another list and what's in these lists are essentially the two variables that I explained, the URL and the title. So we can see here we have a URL for the Arabasta saga, and then we have a title here. And if we click that, and it would bring us to this page. So that's pretty cool uh, in and of itself, but from a database perspective, it's not quite where we want to be. So the next steps. Um, and what we want to do is kind of flesh out the information that we have. You know, we have a link and we have the title, but other than bringing us to this page, we don't really have too much information. So just by doing a quick browse, you know, we can see there's a bunch of text over here, some hyperlinks, we have contents, and then we have some details about the saga here. So we have the Arabasta saga, uh, volumes 12 to 24, 13 volumes, chapters 101 to 217, we got the, the number of chapters, anime episodes, and the years released. So that content would be pretty interesting to, to gather. And so what we're going to do is build off of our script and see if we can uh, get that information. So let's start doing that. And as I mentioned in my first video, I do have these scripts pre-written, so I will be kind of glancing back and forth from the monitors um, because I'm not the best at this, as I mentioned, but want to kind of just share that with everybody. So the first thing uh, we want to do is want to define the data fields that we want to capture because we're not going to be able to grab everything on that website or at least I wasn't um, and where my focus was in this kind of I don't know I wouldn't say table but this this section right here with details and if we inspect in there X my net navy will, will kind of help us will show us exactly what we're looking for but let me redo that. I can kind of see uh, a certain syntax of, you know, header three. They have this class here, PI data label, PI secondary font. Then it has volumes. Um, and then it has the actual numerical values in there. So this is data that we should be able to retrieve not only for the volumes, but you can see again, um, if I open this one, it'll have it for the chapters right here, and then it'll also have it for the, uh, the episodes here as well, and the years released. So let's work to build out our script and see if we can 
web scrape that data as well. So going back to the VS code. So now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of the data fields that I want to web scrape from there. Uh, I'm going to call it data capture list and I'm going to focus on the volume, the chapter, and the episode. So these are the data fields that we want to capture and then What we're going to do is, let's see. Okay, so we've identified the fields that we want to capture. After that, I'm going to create a data frame working off of the list of lists that we created before for the sagas. So I'm going to call it the saga data frame. list into the data frame will be a little bit more readable for us. I'm going to define some column names. Since we appended two variables, we're going to have two columns. We'll call them link name. And then after that, I'm going to clean up the name variable. some extra text that we specifically don't want. So I'm going to essentially remove um, this text from the main. That'll give us a data frame. And then what I noticed when I was doing this exercise was that I did come across some duplicates. And I apologize if I'm moving kind of fast. I didn't realize how long it would take to get such little script in the last video. And my camera kind of timed out at 20 minutes. So I'm trying to stay under that threshold. Um, cool. So I'm going to drop some duplicates. And run this script and see what that gives us now. Uh, well, let me print this for you guys what we have it should be more readable cool so essentially uh, it took the list that we had up top and it put this in this tabular format which is a lot better for us to read um, a little bit easier so you know you have this and then you have the name sagas in there as well but we'll clean that out later on okay so now we move forward to grabbing the actual data fields and we're going to use the for loop again. That would be very common <laughs> throughout all these scripts because that's pretty much the only way I could figure out how to do everything. So we're going to write a for loop that is essentially going to go through this data frame um, and open up each one of these links and try to grab the fields that we stipulated up here in the data capture list. So we're going to do for link and saga data frame dot uh, bracket link. First I'll create a link list, an empty list here that we append to. Uh, create a variable called web link, we'll just be the link that's being iterated on. And okay. To that we'll append that. We're going to use the HTML open function again. And, well, we'll call it HTML, I'm sorry. We're going to use the URL open function on the link. We'll call that HTML open. Basically, we're telling the computer to act as if it was a human and open up the web link that it's iterating through. Uh, we're going to do the soup again. Uh, 
parser so that we can turn it into usable information, readable data. And now we have to do what's called a nested for loop. So we've created this initial for loop, which will go through this data frame and for each row open up the website, manipulate the HTML data, and kind of parse it so that we can uh, work with it further. After we get that parsed data, that's still not going to be good enough for us. So we're going to do another for loop where we're going to say for data in data capture list. So we created the data capture list with has the fields. Um, we have a for loop that's looping through these links here. And now in the nested for loop, so for each link that it opens, we're essentially going to uh, <laughs> make another for loop and tell it to look for the fields. So two, three for loops. But this will get us working. And we're using the same find all function that we did in the initial part. Um, but we have to be a little bit more specific with how we write this syntax. So we're going to tell it to look for a specific class. And this is going to be that like weird PI stuff that we saw. Uh, just really trying to pinpoint exactly where or what we should be looking for. that for loop uh, part of it so we have a for loop that's opening each of the links and then for each link it's running another for loop where it's taking a variable from the data capture list and then within that it's going to look for specific tags that have these class uh, these different class attributes in it and we'll set the condition for that now. Um, really, we're just going to clean it. Clean the text from the tag. this gives us hopefully so what we should be what we should have now is a data frame that's similar to this but with additional fields um, the columns won't be super clean we'll do that probably in the next video but we should have some additional information um, some di additional data points on the solids assuming I typed everything correctly let's test it out So that was the first data list or data frame that we created. And okay, so we have uh, more columns now. We have the link, this, and then we have a very um, not clean column over here. So it's, it's giving us the manga chapters, some chapters here. Some of them looks like duplicates. Uh, the counts here but it's not super clean so we'll definitely have to visit that but I think for this video that that is some solid progress um, we'll explore the actual contents of this a little bit more later on but I hope you enjoyed the additions to the script you made as always uh, like comment 
And if you enjoyed the video and are looking forward to continuing our journey with us, uh, please don't be shy and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, Taicho, logging out.